Hey guys, today we're going to explore the different methods available to power your wired IP security cameras. When you buy a security camera, you'll find two main ports like these, an RJ45 network connection and a 12 volt plug, but rarely will you find a 12 volt adapter included with that camera. Some cameras can be powered with the 12 volt adapter, and some must be. Some can be powered over the network cable with the aid of a power injector and splitter. Some can be powered with a PoE managed switch and a PoE unmanaged switch. And lastly, an NVR. The PoE ports on the back of it can also be used to power your cameras. When looking for a security camera, you often see specifications about PoE compatible and 802.3 AF. So what does this all mean and which one is best for you? So let's start from the beginning. PoE, or power over Ethernet, means that the electricity required to power the camera can be supplied through the network cable, which is also used to transfer the data which has the camera's footage. So let's have a look inside one of these cables and see what's in there. Not all the wires in here are used to transfer data. There are some extra ones in here and we can use these to send electricity to the camera. These wires are tiny but they can still transfer power up to 100 meters or 328 feet. Keep this distance in mind when planning the distance your cameras are going to be from your power supply if you're using PoE. IEEE 802.3 AF is a PoE standard used by most security cameras. It's a low wattage standard which uses about 12 and a half to 13 watts. If you want to use PoE, make sure that your camera and your power source, like a switch, are compatible with this standard. Let's look at the first method of powering a security camera, 12 volt power adapter. Now PoE is the preferred method of powering these security cameras, that's why there's no 12 volt adapter included with most of these cameras. There is a 12 volt port on each of these cameras in case you need to use them for testing a new feature or troubleshooting or testing out a camera in a certain location, you just want to power it up and see how the feed looks. Now most of these cameras consume about 7 watts of power and if you do want a power adapter you could pick one up that's 12 volts and 1 to 2 amps. I'll add a link in my blog in case you want more information about the power adapters or any of the products I'm showing here today. The main advantage to using a power adapter is its convenience. It's a quick and easy solution for powering a camera for the first time, debugging it, and if you don't want to spend the money on PoE injection devices. The main disadvantage to using a power adapter is you need to have an outlet nearby. If you don't have an outlet nearby, then you're dealing with extension cords, and then trying to hide those extension cords may be a challenge, especially outdoors. Now let's look at the case where the power adapter is required. This camera consumes 25 watts of power, and that's above the safe limit that these little 23-24 gauge wires within your network cable can deliver. In this case, you cannot use PoE to power this camera. You have to use an external power source, and when I got this 18x zoom camera, it came with that power source to power those large motors. I recommend installing this camera with an extension cord, as you probably won't have a power source nearby, as this will most likely be installed in a high location. So you're going to need a data line and a power line to run this camera. Now the main pro to this camera is that it's awesome and trying to figure out what to do with those extra wires is no big deal considering what this camera has to offer. The next option is the PoE injector and splitter. These are available in various formats but this is the simplest and cheapest option. They're like five bucks. So basically you're turning a network cable into an extension cord. The injector does exactly that. It injects the network cable with electricity. So simply plug in your 12 volt power adapter into your injector. This end would go into your switch or router. And now you have data and electricity sharing the same line. So just plug that in. At the other end of the line, you can't simply just plug that into your camera. You have to separate the electricity from the data and plug them in separately. And the reason for that is these injectors are, and splitters are not 802.3 AF compliant. You can get injectors which are compliant and you don't need to separate the electricity out before entering it into the camera, but these are more expensive. I'll add a link for those in my blog as well. Now you can take this a step further by adding a power supply unit. That's a power box which contains wiring where you can plug in multiple power cords at once, except you don't need to have the bulky adapters. You simply plug in the wires to the 12 volt end and those wires are included in some cases. A power supply box is plugged into one outlet and it powers all your cameras at once. The main advantage to using an injector and splitter is the price, but the disadvantage is you could end up with messy wires around your power source and you need to have a splitter at each camera, which means that you have extra hardware now to tuck away and to try to hide and protect from the weather. 
Next, let's have a look at a PoE unmanaged switch. This is the most common method for powering security cameras with PoE. As you know, a switch is basically just a network splitter. The unmanaged part means that there's no configuration that can be done with this device. It's just a splitter. Some or all of the ports on the back may support PoE, so make sure you check that out before you purchase one. To use one of these is very simple. You basically just plug in your network cable to one end, and then on the other, you plug in your camera. And that's it, your camera will turn on and it has power and it also will transfer data to your switch and then to your network. It's that simple. So the pros are obvious. The cons are the price. However, these have come down in price over the past couple of years. You can pick up a decent one with 16 channels or 16 ports for about $150 US. Next we have a PoE managed switch. Now basically it works the same way as the unmanaged switch except it has a lot more flexibility. Most people don't have the need to set up VLANs, monitor power usage and control traffic. These have also come down in price for the past, in the past few years. I picked up this 48 port unit on a classified site for 120 bucks which is great and it has tons of options in this user interface. These are really great devices and if you're a techie person and can configure them and maintain them I'd say go for it. And lastly, we have an NVR, which is a network video recorder. It's a device used to see your live footage, configure your cameras, and playback video. It's an all-in-one solution and no PC is required. On the back here, you have PoE ports, and you simply plug in your camera, and it gets power and transfers data with one wire. Now, the biggest plus for this type of system is the tidiness. Only one outlet will be used, and that powers the cameras and the recorder. I also like how you can monitor the wattage on each camera's port, like a managed switch. The only con with using an NVR is you cannot easily move it to a different location. It has to be located where the wires from your cameras terminate if you're relying on the PoE abilities. If you're using Blue Iris, for example, on a PC, you could put the computer anywhere on your network, as long as your PoE switch was supplying power to the camera. It doesn't matter where the computer was, it could be upstairs in a closet or downstairs locked in the server rack but you can't easily move an NVR like that. So that covers the most popular ways to power your wired IP security cameras. My preference is to use a PoE unmanaged switch. The simple, easy to use, and quite small. Now I normally plug it into a UPS, which is an uninterruptible power supply. In case there's a power failure, my cameras will still have power. All the products seen here are detailed on my blog at newviewboard.com in the description below. Check out my video on architecture to see how everything's set up and running. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.